They gave Arnold Schwarzenegger a raw deal, and no one gives him a raw deal. I mean, come on, who would do that? Only people who are fed up with life and have a death wish would even attempt to give Arnie a raw deal, because that's just something you don't do without any repercussions. Released in 1986, in the hype of the Schwarzenegger craze, the muscle man himself stars as former FBI agent turned small town sheriff Mark Kaminsky who fakes his death and goes undercover as a dangerous criminal called Joseph P. Brenner, so he can infiltrate and destroy a powerful crime organization led by the powerful mob boss Luigi Patrovita, where we get all the usual action-packed bangs and crashes that you would expect from a 1980s action movie starring Arnie. But hey, that just makes it all the more awesome, even in this often forgotten about entry in the movie Tough Guy's career. So today we're looking into the Arnie movie that doesn't get talked about too much. Raw Deal. This one's for Keith. Happy birthday, mate. Oh yeah, and you've probably noticed we've got a bit of a different background going on here. Well, this is a temporary background while renovations are being done to the old studio. So just remember, it's only temporary. And with that, let's check it out. Number 10, Raw Deal was made in order to make another movie. Raw Deal was written by Italian scriptwriters Luciano Vincenzoni and Sergio Donati, both of whom had previously written spaghetti westerns for Sergio Leone, and a few years prior they both wrote the screenplay for the movie Orca, aka Jaws, only with an orca whale. The story of Raw Deal found its way to the legendary Italian-American movie producer giant Dino De Laurentiis, and he wanted his production company, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, to produce the movie. Not because he had a particular passion for Raw Deal, but because at that time De Laurentiis was trying to get the action-packed science fiction spectacle Total Recall off the ground. You see, De Laurentiis brought the rights to the story Total Recall is based off, We Can Remember, For If You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick. However, there was one major issue. De Laurentiis had financial issues, and thus was having trouble creating funds for Total Recall. So he felt that if he made a fun action movie, then he should garner enough cash in the box office so he can then put that cash into the production of Total Recall, which seemed to have been his true passion project at that time. So initially, Raw Deal wasn't made because someone had a genuine love of Raw Deal, but rather to get Total Recall made. Number 9. The director was offered several projects before choosing Raw Deal. Raw Deal was directed by English filmmaker John Irving. In an interview Irving gave with filmhounds.co.uk, Irving explained that shortly before Raw Deal, he directed a movie called Turtle Diary, which couldn't be further apart from Raw Deal, as it's a dramatic movie full of romance about discovering the lost joys of life. However, Irving was disappointed with the lack of interest there was in promoting the movie, referring to its promotion as dull and disinteresting. He then met up with Dino De Laurentiis, who wanted Irving to direct one of his movies that he had in the pipeline. These included Dune, but Irving didn't want to make a movie about a giant worm. De Laurentiis then offered him Mutiny on the Bounty, but Irving didn't want to do that as he knew another filmmaker really wanted that one. Irving laughed that De Laurentiis offered him, quote, Gordon Flash, which of course is Flash Gordon, joking that De Laurentiis couldn't even get the name right when he was offering him the job. What I find baffling is that De Laurentiis offered Irving a movie that was already made, as this conversation supposedly took place in 1984, and De Laurentiis had previously made Flash Gordon in 1980. Who knows, maybe it was referring to an unmade sequel. De Laurentiis then offered Irving Raw Deal, and with the knowledge that the movie will feature a big star, that being Arnold Schwarzenegger, that alone would guarantee that the movie would get released. 
So with that, Irving agreed and came on board as Raw Deal's director. But hang on a minute. We're getting ahead of ourselves here and completely glossed over how Schwarzenegger happens to be cast as the movie's main action-packed protagonist, Mark Kaminsky. Number 8. Arnie Wanted Out of a Deal In the early 80s, Arnie had signed a multiple picture deal with Dino De Laurentiis, and by 1986 he had starred in several of the producer's movies, including Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Destroyer, and Red Sonja. However, by the mid-80s, Arnie's movie career was really starting to take off, where he was moving into new pastures with movies like The Terminator and Commando. So when De Laurentiis approached Arnie to star in Raw Dill, Schwarzenegger was interested, but not necessarily with Raw Dill. He wanted to star in De Laurentiis' other project, Total Recall, instead. But De Laurentiis didn't think that Schwarzenegger was right for the film, as at that time he was trying to get Patrick Swayze to star as Total Recall's main lead, Douglas Quaid. Now, probably feeling annoyed by this, Arnie agreed to star in Raw Deal if he could end his contract deal with De Laurentiis. So after Raw Deal, he wouldn't have to make any more movies with the producer. And at that time, he actually was contracted to star in more Conan movies, and clearly he wants it out so he can continue to progress his movie career and not just swing a sword around. So, yeah, Arnie pretty much accepted Raw Deal, probably because he felt like he got a Raw Deal for not being cast in Total Recall and no longer wanted to work with Dino De Laurentiis. Resign. I'll be prosecuted. Any way you want it. Yep, that's right! When it came to making more Conan movies, Arnie was like, No, I don't want to do it! Put the cookie down! And really, it was a good choice too, as the following years he would go on to star in classics like Predator, The Running Man, and of course Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Number 7, Original Title. There does seem to be an irony that several raw deals happened in order to get raw deal made. De Laurentiis made it to get money to make Total Recall, and Schwarzenegger agreed to star in it to end a contract. So it would seem that raw deal was actually a fitting title. However, that wasn't the original title. During the early days of production, the movie had several different titles, including Let's Make a Deal and Triple Identity, on the account that there were several scripts with several different titles. Now, the story was conceived by Luciano Vincenzoni and Sergio Donati, as mentioned, but along the way, several other scriptwriters would come on board to work on the script. In the final film, the screenplay is credited to writer Gary DeVore and Norman Wexler. Wexler, incidentally, also worked on the script for Saturday Night Fever and Serbico. Director John Irving said that he also worked on the script and loved every minute of working on the script, saying, quote, If they wanted a hamburger... I'll give them a deluxe hamburger. <laughs> Yum. As the production went on, it was decided to call the movie Raw Deal for the simple reason that it was felt that it sounded more like an action movie. That, and I also like to think that they knew that the tagline, no one gives him a raw deal, was just too badass to pass up. Number six, the rest of the cast. Another iconic face of action who appears in Raw Deal is Robert Darby as Max Keller. He initially was approached to play the villain in Total Recall, Richter, but unlike Schwarzenegger, he turned that one down to star in Raw Deal instead. Darby had just appeared in The Goonies at that time and would go on to star in other iconic action movies like Die Hard and Predator 2. But I'll always remember him as Fran Sanchez from License to Kill, in which, in my opinion, he was the best Bond villain ever. Paul Shinar, who previously starred as the drug lord Sosa from Scarface, would return to play another powerful criminal in Raw Dill, that being Paulo. The movie's big bad, mob boss Luigi Patrovita, was played by Sam Wanamaker. The only other role I've personally seen him in was playing Mr. Warfield in Superman IV The Quest for Peace, as in that guy who owns all the sleazy tabloids. And Darren McGavin played Harry Shannon, the man who sends Kaminsky on his dangerous mission. Shannon also played the dad in A Christmas Story, and Billy Madison's dad in, well, Billy Madison. <laughs> on an unrelated side note, the other day on Instagram, Arnold Schwarzenegger put up his own ASMR video. It was one that was made for BMW, where he's unwrapping, sorry, unboxing, a Christmas present. Yes, 
Arnie may have done many things, but he has now also done an ASMR video. I honestly didn't know I needed this till I saw it. Number 5. Filming with Hurricanes Despite only making the movie to get out of a contract, and possibly the annoyance of not being cast in Total Recall as mentioned, Arnie seemed to really have a good time working on Raw Dill. He liked the director John Irving and referred to him as the actor's director. And he also liked that in Raw Dill, he got to wear proper suits in the movie, and unlike his other movies, not have a wardrobe that looked like it cost $10. And he felt like he came out of the production as a better actor. Director John Irving seems to share Schwarzenegger's sentiment that Raw Dill was a fun and positive movie to work on. He said that he had a great crew and really enjoyed working with Schwarzenegger, and that he found making the stunts to be enjoyable. Raw Dill was mainly shot around Chicago and North Carolina. John Irving further added that producer Dino De Laurentiis managed to get a grant from the state of North Carolina, where he built a crazy studio next to Wilmington Airport, with the sound stages being hastily put together, and not entirely brilliant. And what didn't help is that every time it rained, filming would have to come to a stop. And to further frustrate things, Raw Dill was filmed during a hurricane season but he further added that it was still lots of fun. I guess the crew didn't mind the setbacks and hurricanes because they were all just having such a blast making the movie. That's nice. I like that. That's all I have to say about that. Number four, the scream to end all screams. So given that Raw Deal is an action movie, it's naturally going to feature many bangs and crashes. But it seems that one explosion in particular featured the assistance from the godfather of soul himself, James Brown. In one shot we see a car explode, where many claim that if you listen carefully, the sound effect that is used at the start of the explosion is James Brown's iconic scream. <laughs> Yep, just at the start of the explosion, you can hear his sharp, iconic scream. Why, out of all the sound effects that could have possibly been used, did they use James Brown? Well, I have absolutely no idea. But what makes this case even stranger is that earlier in the year, I made an episode about Independence Day, where once again, in a scene featuring an explosion, you can hear James Brown scream making Brown not only the master of soul, but also movie explosion sound bites. Just what on earth is the connection between movie explosions and James Brown? I just don't know. Maybe it's an in-joke between filmmakers? I don't know. This one has confuzzled me. Number three, raw deal around the world. The movie poster for Raw Dill was put together by John Alvin, who in the 80s and 90s created many iconic posters, including E.T., Blade Runner, Gremlins, Batman Returns, The Little Mermaid, and Space Jam. And his poster for Raw Dill gets the job done. You know right away that you're watching an Arnold Schwarzenegger action movie, where Arnie looks badass wearing a white vest, which he would eventually hand over to John McClane a few years later. Oh, and in case you didn't know that this movie stars Schwarzenegger, don't worry, the poster reminds you five times by having the name Schwarzenegger show up repeatedly in the background. In fact, the background is nothing but the name Schwarzenegger. But hey, this is an Arnie movie from the 80s, so it totally works and goes with the awesome cheesiness of it all. When observing variations of the poster from other parts of the world, you can see that it had multiple titles. In France, it was called The Agreement. In Italy, it went under the title of Codis Magnum. The Spanish title was The Executor. In Sweden, it was called Harder Bud. And no, that's no one saying to Arnie, you've got to try Harder Bud, but I believe it translates to Hard Bid. But I think that Germany definitely has the best title, as it went under the name The City Shark. Yeah, just like Jaws, only less Harry and more Arnie. The Turkish poster called the movie Danko, but I must say, I love this poster. It's awesome. But something is going on with Arnie's head. It looks like he has a ginormous head with a little itty bitty face. It's weird. 
but my favorite poster variant is without a doubt the Thai one. Just look at how beautiful this poster is. It's amazing. This should have been the main poster that was used rather than the official one with its army of Schwarzenegger titles. Number two, Raw Reception. Raw Deal was released in June 1986 and it made a profit of over $16 million on a budget that sat somewhere between $8 to $10 million. So its earnings, though modest, were considered disappointing. Especially when compared to Arnie's previous movie Commando, which made over $57 million, and his next feature Predator, which made over $98 million. To add salt to the wounds, Raw Deal got trashed by critics. Going by reviews offered by Wikipedia, something that the critics seemed to complain about was the action-packed violence and its body counts. Well, yeah. It's an action movie that stars Schwarzenegger. What were they expecting? Breakfast at Tiffany's? You know, sometimes I just don't get critics. I don't get how Die Hard can now be observed as a masterpiece, but Raw Deal? Nope, that is just too violent with too many dead bodies. Pfft. However, something else that was criticised was its lack of originality. It was often compared to Sylvester Stallone's fellow one-man action movie that came out that same year, Cobra, which was another action spectacle that was trashed by critics, with Gene Siskel feeling that they were basically the same movie. However, some critics did feel that Raw Deal was better than Cobra. The New Yorker gave it a more favourable review, referring to it as, quote, reprehensible and enjoyable, adding that the movie makes you so brain dead, you'll happily laugh along with the movie's trashiness and violence. Okay, I don't know if that's a compliment wrapped up in an insult, or an insult wrapped up in a compliment. And the movie's appreciation hasn't seemed to have picked up over time, as it has a critic score of 27% on Rotten Tomatoes, and an audience score of 28%. Hey, I guess that's at least 1% better, right? But the question is, did Raw Deal deserve better? Number one, Raw Deal led to the creation of Total Recall after all. So there's an irony that Dino De Laurentiis got Raw Deal made so Total Recall could also be made, as Raw Deal would in fact lead to the creation of Total Recall. But unfortunately for De Laurentiis, he wouldn't be making it. Basically, the De Laurentiis Entertainment Group went bankrupt in 1989 due to debt and too many box office failures, where fellow film company Carolco Pictures bought out the company and thus bought the rights to Total Recall and took over its production, which led to the awesome movie that we got, and Arnie got to star in the movie after all. I guess he had the last laugh and proved that he was the right choice for Quaid. This must be what they mean by poetic justice. So really, if there wasn't Raw Dill, there wouldn't have been Total Recall, and Carolco making Total Recall would lead to the company making the movie juggernaut that is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So although it may not seem like it, Raw Dill is actually a very important picture in the history of cinema, giving the ripple effect of its creation. But where does that leave Raw Dill itself? Well, sadly it slipped through the cracks of Schwarzenegger's filmography, and I often find it to be a forgotten film in his list of movies. Yes, there's those movies that everyone raves about, like the Terminator movies, and Predator, and Total Recall, and True Lies, and so on. But then you get some that don't seem to get the same attention, and often gets left out of discussion. I think Raw Deal is a fun, action-packed popcorn flick. It's a good time. It's not trying to be a cinematic masterpiece, but rather just some fun, exciting, light entertainment. So I say go back and watch it. It's an enjoyable and rewarding movie that shows Arnold Schwarzenegger at his prime, when he was an unstoppable movie tough guy, complete with relentless action and one-liners. Well, Arnie always says that he'll be back and he always is. So it's time to go back to Raw Deal to give this movie another go so we can all see that it actually really is a fun action movie of its time. Anyway, I'm Minty, and producer Dino De Laurentiis made Raw Deal in order to make Total Recall. But eventually, someone else made that movie. I guess you could say he got a Raw Deal. Did you see that? I said it. Yeah, look, I said it, yeah. All right, see ya.